Day 27, the best life. Life according to Yobo. Hey, your book is at yoboproductions.com. It's waiting on you. It's at amazon.com waiting on you. What you waiting for? Get your book. Get ready. We're going into day 27. Boy, this 30-day journey is almost over. Woo-wee. I know y'all have tossed off some baggage. Here we go. Day 27. Don't listen to gossip and don't repeat gossip. Don't listen. I don't want to hear. That's You get your, your phone number saved under do not answer with me. Don't call me with any gossip. If you want to gossip about somebody, gossip about your kids. You know, somebody did that one time. They called my husband. Well, uh, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. And then they went on to tell the story. Well, they didn't know the story they were telling me. The person was right over my house at the time. Number one, you ain't had no business gossiping, especially when you're calling yourself an elder. And number two, if you're going to tell the story, tell the story right. So they went on, and uh, my husband, they called my husband, not me. So he just polite, because remember, he saved for real. Now, he's not going to say that about his wife, but him, he saved for real. So they told him the story, and my husband told me the story. I said, oh, okay, and I thought, should I go in here and tell this person, now that's not gossip if I'm telling them, oh, by the way, you know, Brother Gravy Train just called and said some stuff about you, but I did it. So I told her. She picked up the phone. She called Brother Gravy Train. She said, hey, Brother Gravy Train, while you picking up the phone calling people spreading gossip, won't you talk about your daughter whose husband beat her up? Or won't you talk about your son who ain't taking care of none of his kids? Or won't you talk about this one? I mean, she went through his whole family. Because remember, a couple days ago, we had a lesson. If you live in a glass house, don't throw stones. Because just like you see what everybody else doing, they see what you doing. So now I said, this man, done pick, we ain't talked to this man in two years. Why on oh God's green earth would he want to pick up the phone and call us with some gossip? But when the person rattled off all his family's business, do you know he had the nerve to get, the man got offended. The man was upset. He was mad. Then he called his children to tell his children everything that this person has said about them. Then they called and they, I mean, it was just a big old mess. All of that could have been cleared up if he would have heeded the advice on day 27 of Life According to Yobo. Don't listen to gossip and don't repeat gossip. Had I spent the first 47 years fixing my jacked up life instead of gossiping, mm, talking about me, about everybody else's jacked up life, there's no telling what I might have accomplished by now. Ain't no telling. Honey child, there was a time I could have told you whose daughter was pregnant again. I could have told you whose son was in jail again. I could have told you which church member had backslid again. I could have told you who was cheating on their spouse again. I would have arrived late to my mama's funeral trying to hear the latest piece of gossip. The worst part is that I would be shouting in church on Sunday and listening to gossip on Monday. Ooh, church folks can keep some gossip going because I used to be one of them. Let me tell you something else about church folks. I know you think I'll pick on them, but when I'm talking about gossip, I got to use us as an example because that's all I know. Church folks can't tell you the scripture for last Sunday's sermon. They can't tell you the scripture. They can't tell you the verse. They can't give you the sermon time from last Sunday. They don't know it. But honey, they can tell you about the time in 1973 when Brother Gravy Train told his wife he was cleaning up the church when he was actually sneaking off to go see Sister Watermelon. See, let me tell you what happened. This is what happened. See, Brother Gravy Train was supposed to be at the church. And then when he left, his wife looked over. She said, oh my goodness, he left his keys here. So Brother Gravy Train's wife got the keys. She hopped in her car. She went on over to the church to give him the keys. But when she got there, she saw his car 
was parked there and the church was locked. So she thought it was strange. Remember, this was 1973. This was before cell phones. So she just waited with the church keys and she knew by then this rascal is up to no good. So she just waited. And she sat there and the longer she waited, the hotter she got. So a couple hours later, she see a car pulling up, and it's Sister Watermelon. But Sister Watermelon was down on the corner. That's how slick they were. So he got out the car, out of Sister Watermelon car, down the street from the church. But she got good eyes. She got 20-20 vision. She don't need no glasses. And from a distance, she could see them lean over, and they gave each other a kiss. And then he got out the car, and then he went back to the church to get in his car, because that was his alibi, lied on the church. Boy, when she saw that rascal get in the car, she jumped out her car, and there they were duking it out right there in front of the church. And some of the neighbors saw what was happening. They tried to jump in, but they couldn't break them up because she was mad. She had reached in her car, and she got a, an iron out of her car, boy, a tire iron, and she was swinging that thing. So they called the police. Well, I mean, this is what they said. I wasn't there, but I'm telling you what everybody said. So they called the police. Police came down there. All oh, this happened in front of the church. And then one of the church members who live a couple doors down, they saw what happened. So before the police officers could get them in the car, they had already called and the church folks knew. I know about it because, you know, she called somebody else to call somebody else to call somebody else to call me. Who I mean, it was a mess on Sunday. And when all of them came up in church on Sunday, oh, Sister Watermelon had the nerve to come to church. Brother Gravy Train was there with shades on because he had a black eye and his wife was just sitting there. But what they did, they had the church mother surround her because everybody knew. You know, if she looked, looked like she getting ready to get up, for testimony service or to walk around the offering table, something like that. Y'all, y'all watch her. They actually, they took Sister Watermelon out to church when it was offering time. They said, you better get out because when she walking around, she may throw something. And of course, I knew I was sitting right over in that area. And I said, if she throws something, shoot, I ain't even going to sit around her because Brother Gravy Train wife Aim might be off and when she throw it, then she might hit me. Ooh, Ooh that was a child. That was, that was a mess back then. The 1973 show, a girl, I remember that. Oh, girl, yes, Lord. I remember that to the day I die. Now, what you asked me, what was the, what you asked me? What was the sermon about last Sunday? Uh, 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 uh. It was something from the Bible, uh, uh, something from, uh, first Exodus, uh, 20, no, no, third Deuteronomy, uh, uh it's in my note. Let me finish life according to Yobo, then I'll get back to the message. Okay, so I said, yeah, I'd be shouting in church on Sunday and listening to gossip on Monday. Have mercy. I transitioned from a gossiper to a fixer-upper, you know, the type who invests all their energy into fixing everybody else so they don't have to fix themselves. That, you got to watch nice people. The ones that's always eager to help somebody else, they need to be helping themselves. I know, because I was one of them. A fixer-upper is just about as bad as a gossiper because both of them serve the same purpose. So if you're a gossiper, if you are a fixer-upper, this is why y'all do that. They provide something to do for those of us who refuse to find something better to do. That's life according to Yobo, day 27. Quit gossiping and find something else to do. Get up out of people business. Get you your own business. And get your book at YoboProductions.com. And then there's more to the story about Brother Gravy Tree. I got to tell you what happened the next Sunday. But remember, I'm trying to keep these videos down to seven minutes. I'm, what I'm, on, I'm on eight minutes and 51 seconds now. But you call me and I, who, it's a whole lot more to the story. Child, I remember it like it was yesterday. Yes, I do. I'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye-bye. Here go the Clark sisters. Enjoy your life, okay? And you go enjoy when I tell you the rest of that story. Boy, that was some church mess for sure. Who that, that was funny. <laughs> Ooh, Lord. I tell you that sister Waterman. That's a fighting sister right there. I don't mess with her. See y'all later. <laughs>